morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Zach Shulman. I run the entrepreneurship program uh, at Cornell. Um, it's a university-wide uh, program. I always like to say I have a board of directors of 13 deans, every dean of every school and college, and people look at me like I'm in some sort of pain, and I would say, no, it's awesome, and I have this great access to all these deans, and uh, we help each other out on all sorts of fronts. Um, so uh, our annual fall conference, Eclectic Convergence, um, is obviously right now. Um, I want to quickly go over some ground rules and logistics. Uh, we have uh, five fireside chats today, and we have a final interactive session uh, with Jen Dolsky at around four. Um, I'm hoping everyone can stick around for the entire day. Um, we'll have live Q&A um, at the tail end of each speaker. Uh, the, there, there are folks in the room that have microphones, uh, handhelds, uh, that they can take to you. Uh, so we'll be raising hands and asking brief questions, uh, which will be fun. Uh, at 1.30, actually at noon we have lunch from noon to about 1.30. Uh, take advantage, go upstairs, check out the exhibitor booths. There's also a photo booth upstairs uh, for your professional headshots, which we like to do every year. I like to be the first person to do it, but they weren't ready for me at 8 a.m. this morning. So I have to wait in line. Um, and uh, we have a startup pitch competition featuring um, a bunch of startups, both from the Ithaca, um, Weill, and Cornell Tech campuses, which is great. Um, and I always like to give a shout out to Scott Velsky, who is where? Where's Scott? Way over in the corner. Uh, Scott is my co MC uh, for the day. Uh, he's been doing this event with us for, I think, the past 10 years, which is absolutely Yay. fantastic. So, um, again, three morning speakers. Uh, we have Jim, Susie, and Barry. Um, I haven't seen Barry yet, so hopefully he'll show up. Um, again, lunch, pitches, afternoon speakers, and closing remarks. All quite easy. We have fantastic sponsors. They're all on the back of your shirts, which I'm hoping uh, that you all take with you. Um, these sponsors are incredibly important to our program, and they're actually very involved uh, in what we do um, as, a, as a startup generator. Okay, so take advantage of our sponsors as well. I have a great team working with me um, at Cornell. Uh, you're not going to be able to tell who they are. They're not wearing any team t-shirts or staff t-shirts, um, but you can probably figure it out quite easily. Uh, they're behind the desk. They're roaming around. Do me a favor and thank them as much as you can all day long. This event would not happen without them. Okay, cell phones on silent, please. It always happens. Someone's phone rings. You can just check them now if you don't mind. That'd be fantastic. Or just shut it off. Um, and while I have your attention, I do want to just take I don't know, 10 seconds of silence for all the unfortunate things going on in the world. So I'll read this. You can close your eyes. You can keep your eyes open. You can read with me. Whatever you feel is appropriate for you. Um, I hope this doesn't offend anybody. Um, if it does, uh, you can talk to me about it after if I actually let you. Um, I might not. We'll see. Um, it's, pretty, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So let's have a moment of silence of support for the innocent victims in both Israel and Gaza who have endured unthinkable hardship that we read about every day. In fact, I'm sure a lot of you have read about all that's on campus, uh, more than you want. Um, and also for others around the world, including those on our own campuses, who have endured related hatred. So let's hope that we have some lasting peace and that it will come soon and last for a long time. Okay, thank you. So with all that said, I'm gonna turn this over to Greg Morissette, I like to say one of my bosses. I'm not sure if he thinks of it that way. Um, and uh, the Dean of Cornell Tech. So Greg, come on up. Thanks. Thanks, Zach. And uh, thank you so much for having this wonderful conference here at the Cornell Tech campus. It's a delight to see everybody here. Um, really honored to have it here. This is the second year that we've had it on the campus. And I think uh, as a place that's built for entrepreneurship, it's the right place to have it. So thank you, Zach. Thank you to your whole team for organizing and running all this. In a few minutes, I'm going to bring up Jim Cavalieri. He's going to discuss his career journey since graduating from Cornell. He was class of 91 and senior vice president, office of the chair and CEO at Salesforce. Uh, but before we do that, I, because Zach gave me the opportunity, I want to tell you a little bit about Cornell Tech and what's going on here, if you guys don't mind. Um, this year, marks the 10th anniversary since we had our first class of students. So we had seven students in the Google building in 2013. This year, we have 598 students on campus. That's so a little bit of growth since then over the last 10 years. Um, and we had, I think, uh, three faculty 
back in 2013. Today we have about 45 tenure track faculty here on the campus. So we've come a long way. And it's a, a particularly special year for us because we've also launched our 100th startup. In fact, 105 startups have come out of this campus since it opened uh, uh, 10 years ago. So um, we've also refreshed thinking about the next 10 years of Cornell Tech. Where do we want to go? What do we want to do? Where, what do we want to be? Refreshed our vision and mission. And I thought this audience would be particularly useful and good to sort of showcase it to and get your feedback and hear what you have to say about it. Um, so here's our vision, our North Star. Cornell Tech drives the AI era towards lasting economic and social prosperity for New York City and the world. And the, the mission, how we do this, is Cornell Tech develops leaders and technologies for the AI era through foundational and applied research, graduate education, and new ventures. There's a few things that I just want to highlight in this. The AI era is a little controversial. Uh, are we limiting the scope of Cornell Tech too much when we think about the age of AI? But when I think about AI, I don't know what you're reading about in the papers today in terms of uh, generative AI like LLMs or Dolly and so forth. It's rather the whole suite of things that make digital devices, computation and so forth, intelligent. And that includes things beyond perception, uh, beyond speech, beyond language, beyond vision, but also things like planning and control, safety and security, the whole suite of things that we need to actually make things effective. But there's no doubt in my mind that the next decade will be a decade of transformation for every sector of industry and society because of the tools that are emerging today from places like Cornell Tech. So that focus on AI is very intentional, and I hope you agree with me that this is going to be a remarkable age. The other thing that I want to highlight is um, economic and social prosperity. Cornell Tech was set up to be um, helping New York City develop its tech scene. It's actually quite remarkable how much it's progressed over the last decade. For example, last year there were more people working in the tech industry in New York City than in finance. So it's already eclipsed one of the major industries uh, in New York City. Um, it's also the place that more deals were done in New York City last year for uh, uh, venture capital than in Silicon Valley. So a big, remarkable transformation to the tech scene here. And I think Cornell Tech can take, well, all the credit for that, uh, but, but it's fair share of credit. Um, so um, the last thing I would emphasize is the New York City part. Um, it's what makes us distinctive, both with respect to our colleagues and friends in Ithaca, who we partner with really closely, as well as our partnership in Haifa with the uh, Technion Israeli Institute of Technology, a, a key partner on this campus. About one in six of the faculty here are Technion faculty. Most people don't realize that. But um, uh, New York City is our living laboratory for exploring everything from urban issues. By the way, we have a big urban tech summit happening next week. I would invite all of you to come to that, where we're going to study decarbonization technologies and have people like the uh, Chief um, Climate Officer for the City of New York, Rit Agarwala, who's actually also a lecturer here at Cornell Tech, uh, coming to the campus. So uh, I invite you to come to that. But New York City is something that we're both uh, fortunate to have as a background and as a thriving tech scene. It's also something that we feel very responsible. Continuing Cornell's land-grant mission, this land that we're sitting on today was granted by the city to us, and we feel a real responsibility to give back and serve the city. So that social prosperity is just as important to us as the economic prosperity. I want to give you a sense of what we've been building on the faculty here. Most people don't realize this. So this is a, a lame attempt at trying to map the faculty, who actually span different areas, but I bucketed them in a particular one, into what I call our AI stack. So it starts at the bottom with things like hardware, circuits, uh, devices, and so forth. And we have people like Mohammed Abdel Fattah, who's building hardware for data centers that improves uh, specialized FPGAs and other things like this that improve the performance of both learning and inference. Or people like Udit Gupta, who are studying carbon aspects of the IT industry at scale in data centers, including not just how much energy does it take to, to heat and cool and run these things, but also what is the carbon cost in manufacturing the chips and the devices that go into them. Um, moving up the stack, you have 
software, including things like algorithms optimization, and more specific areas like natural language processing, computer vision, and so forth, uh, to more technical systems areas, things like security and privacy. Uh, and then you get into what I call the social zone, where we have things like uh, design, human computer and human robot interaction, but also ethics, law, and policy. And one of the things that's central on this campus, in fact, we make all of our startup uh, uh, students pass through an ethics module and ask them to consider the ethical impacts of everything that they're creating and they're doing here. Um, up to applications, I'm not going to talk about that, but we pick application domains that are uh, synergistic with the strengths of New York City, areas like fintech, areas like media tech, areas like urban tech, because of the strengths in New York. And then, of course, uh, what we're all here for today, entrepreneurship. It's infused through everything that we do in the campus. In fact, every student here passes through what we call our studio program, which is a, a, a fantastic uh, mix of practitioners and faculty working to teach students how to build products and companies for the digital age and the age of AI. So that's what it looks like from the faculty side. By the way, just to orient you, the, the red and the gray faculty are all Cornell faculty. The blue circles here are Technion faculty, and the purple ones are joint in the sense that they're in the Jacobs Technion Cornell Institute. So uh, that's a little bit of color coding for you. But it tells you the, how we're infused and connected and partnered with the Technion here on the campus. From a startup stand up, uh, startup point of view, you can also see that this AI stack is something that we've launched a number of different companies. Of those 105 companies that we've launched, they also spread across that stack. Everything from, for example, Also, which worked with uh, Tom Ristenpart and uh, Vitaly Shmatikov, Ari Jules around security issues. Uh, to uh, one of my favorites is uh, Abstractive Health. Vince is here today, I think. Abstractive is, uh, uh, Vince was a nurse and worked uh, with doctors and saw that one of the biggest challenges they had was not having enough time with their patients. So he built uh, a large language model based, and before they were hot and everything, a summarization tool that actually goes through a patient's records and extracts the relevant information and summarizes that for a doctor, but with links back to the patient notes so that the LLM can't hallucinate things that, that would be too important to, uh, to mess up. Other examples, uh, an another one that I love is Maylee. Maylee was started by uh, one of our graduates, Sam. Sam had a father who had epilepsy and could not drive uh, because of the risk of a seizure. So she's working on adapting the sensors that are coming out in next generation cars to actually help people with disabilities that have a seizure or other kinds of problems and be able to safely park the car. It will allow, allow them to have the freedom to actually move and, 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 and go about. So I think um, the last one I'll highlight is Caveat. Caveat is a legal tech uh, company started by three women here, one a computer scientist, uh, one lawyer, one business. It's the great sort of, uh, you know, interdisciplinary relationships that we like to have here, advised by, for example, uh, Sasha Rush, who's an expert in natural language processing, but also Matt Damore, who's a legal scholar here. Um, they built something that helps influencers, but also models, one of them happened to be a model, uh, deal with contracts. So it turns out in that, in that world, contracts can be very predatory, and pulling out phrases automatically that uh, influencers should consider before signing the contract is something that they were able to build and execute on. So these are some of the kinds of companies that we're launching here from Cornell Tech. I'm very proud of them. <laughs>